Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and checking out my latest video now. This one is going to be about securely erasing your data from your computer. And I'm going to be using, again, a Windows 10 computer, but this is applicable to pretty much every Windows computer that's been made since, like, I don't know, 2000 or something like that. Uh, I know this command showed up in Windows Server 2003 and it's still there. That's really old school and it's going to require a little bit of command line stuff. But once you get the hang of it, it's not a big deal. And there's tons of documentation online, which I'll post some links to in the description. Uh, but anyway, so here's a quick brief uh, background. We're actually going to do this video in probably two parts. Um, and this first part, I'm going to talk a little bit about how your data gets actually deleted. And then we'll talk about how we can get rid of that data for sure. Like, let's say you're going to get rid of your laptop and you want to sell it to somebody else or you want to donate it or something like that. The last thing you want is somebody to be able to run some sort of sniffing program that can uh, delete all of your data that's on there. If you've got some sensitive documentation or you know, family pictures, whatnot. You want to make sure that that stuff is not there when you give your laptop away. So uh, real quick, so here's kind of what your hard drive looks like on the inside. It's either one of these uh, older school now uh, platter hard drives, or you've most likely got one of these uh, stick of gum SSD hard drives. Uh, but either way, it's a hard drive and it stores your data in various sectors within its electronic circuit board brain thing here. And the way it works is simple. You can think of your hard drive as a book, and a book has an index at the very beginning. And that index tells you where you can find various things on each page. Hard drives are much the same. Usually on hard drives, there's an index kind of at the middle portion, or I should say the center portion right here in the very, very center. And then you've got an index about halfway down the platter. Um, SSDs work a little bit differently, but it's essentially the same thing. You have an index somewhere, and then you have a second index somewhere else. And that second index is kind of like a backup. But the index tells the hard drive brain and the computer itself where to find certain files. So let's say you're looking for a picture of something and you do a search for a picture. What the hard drive is going to do is spin around. This arm right here is going to reach out and it's going to read the index first. It's going to look at where that file is supposed to be. And then it's, the arm is going to move to the location on the disk where that file is. And then it reads it and it returns it for you. And that's basically it. When you delete a file, though, off of the hard drive, what you're essentially doing is you're just removing its uh, listing in the index of the hard drive. So when you take a file, say like this picture here, and you drop it into the recycle bin, all you're doing is marking it for deletion. And so the hard drive doesn't really have time to like move its arm to that location and delete the file and get rid of it and everything. What it does is it goes to the index and says, all right, that spot's available now. It just marks that index as blank. However, if someone were to use some sort of special software like autopsy or something along those lines, they could essentially just read the entire disk in its entirety and find that file without using the index whatsoever. And so the program would return that file as saying no index, but still existing on the hard drive. And the same thing kind of happens with SSDs to a lesser degree. Now, SSDs have a special thing called trim, usually embedded within their, uh, their protocols. And that trim thing, essentially when you delete something, it usually permanently deletes that file as well. Um, not just its index, but the actual file. And this has to do with speed of SSDs, like speeding them up and making them move quicker. However, it's not always a sure thing, 100% every single time, depending on the SSD and depending on how fast it is and the brand of it and everything like that. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you delete a file, it doesn't just erase the index or the index listing, but it actually deletes the whole file itself. See, right now in the recycle bin, if I were to open this up, it would show that I've still got this file in here in which this just happens to be the picture of this book right there um, if i were to actually empty the recycle bin so if i go to file uh, double click on that or try that up, should be able to empty the recycle bin here if i were to empty this all that's going to do is going to erase its index but the file still technically exists on my computer and i'll show you what that looks like in a much further down the line video uh, using autopsy to get your files back and uh, scan your computer for other things that you may have deleted on accident but for right now just take my word for it that 
I've deleted this file and all I've done is I've removed its index in the hard drive. Essentially, the file still exists on the hard drive, which is not good for me if that's something that has like my social security number on it or a family, like a family picture of somebody who I don't want uh, other people to find or whatever, uh, whatever privacy concerns I might have, that file still exists and that's not good. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of that file, but how do I do that? Well, when Windows deletes something from the index, essentially what it's doing is it's marking it for overwriting. So what that means is that once I've deleted something from the index, the file still exists, but it's marked for over, being overwritten. And so when I save a new file, if I save that new file and the hard drive deems that the area where that old deleted file is adequate for the new file, then it will just simply overwrite the old file with the new file. And you can say, all right, well, that's no big deal. I just deleted that one thing. Let's just save a different picture somewhere, and then it'll be overwritten. But that's not always the case. This hard drive is humongous. It's like, you know, it could be one or two or even four to 10 gigabytes, or sorry, mega, terabytes nowadays. And with that in mind, no matter where, what you, like how many files you save, there's no guarantee that you will uh, completely overwrite that one file unless you fill up the entire disk with files. And that can be tedious to get rid of one single file, one single picture. Um, especially with the size of files being just a few kilobytes, maybe a few megabytes, and the size of the disk being, you know, multiple gigabytes or even terabytes. So what do we want to do? What we want to do is we want to have a fast way to completely overwrite every single file that's ever been deleted on the disk without having to waste our time downloading a whole bunch of things. And luckily Windows has this has that feature built in. So I'm gonna hit my start key. I'm gonna type in CMD, command prompt, and I'm gonna run it as an administrator. And you can do the same thing here. And then I'm also going to zoom this in a bit so that you can see what I got going on. That's probably too much, but it's fine. All right, so what I've got here is I'm in my C uh, users account, and that's fine. It doesn't matter. You can be in your C system 32. Uh, it doesn't, it, it, as long as you're running it as, a, as, as an administrator, where you type this isn't going to make too much of a difference. And we're going to start with the simple command, and I'm going to show you a little bit more in detail about what else you can do with this. So I'm going to type in cipher, C I P H E R dot E X E, then space. And now forward slash, this is the one that's on the question mark, W, lowercase w. We're going to type in colon, then C, that's for my C drive, and then I'm going to type in backslash, sorry, colon, backslash. So it should look like a little tent here. I've got a back, a forward slash on the front, backslash on the back, and I've got W colon C colon right inside there, and that's it. And then hit enter, and you should see this command running. It says to remove as much data as possible, please close all other applications while cipher slash W is running. What this is doing is it's currently writing random data all over the hard drive. Now mine's moving really, really fast for two reasons. First, I have a 980 Pro in here, and then I also am running in sandbox mode, which allocates just a very small amount of hard drive space. When you run this, depending on your machine and how old it is, it may take a lot longer. All right, so if you don't have time to be sitting here watching this, which you don't need to watch it, by the way, you can set this to run at night, and it will basically delete every or over, overwrite every single deleted file on your machine. Now remember before running this, you need to make sure that for sure everything that you've deleted is gonna be gone because, or you're not gonna need it again because it will be gone forever. Like this, and, and I'll show, I'll have uh, future videos to kind of prove this, but uh, essentially this is overwriting every single piece of information that was marked for deletion on your hard drive. Now you don't have to worry, this isn't overwriting anything that isn't marked for deletion. So when I come back to this, when this is all done, um, all of my files are still gonna be here that I need to access. Anything that I've deleted though is gonna be gone forever. Now you notice what I did here with the recycle bin. I went to recycle bin, I said empty recycle bin. If you have stuff in your recycle bin still and you run the cipher command, it will not, it will not delete or over it, overwrite it and delete it. You still will be able to access it. You need to make sure you empty re your recycle bin first. In uh, past videos, I showed you how to do disk cleanup. That's another good thing to do before you run this command. Now you'll notice it's running this one, two, and now three times. You don't have to worry about how many times it's really running. Um, there's lots of different papers out there that kind of explain uh, the differences between uh, you know, running it just 
this one line versus all three of them versus two out of the three, whatever the case is. Uh, there's all kinds of different arguments out there for you know, running it three times versus just the once uh, or, or and, and making no difference or all the difference or whatever. You can do the research if you want to, but really what it comes down to is as long as it runs this very first line here, it's essentially overwritten everything. This and this, the second one, the writing 0xff and the writing random numbers, those are just... Um, I guess you call, call them fail safes. They're just in cases, but really it's, it, it's just, it's overkill, if you will. Um, but if you've got nothing to do or your computer is going to be sitting idle all night, then you can go ahead and run this whole thing. No big deal. And it, when you come back, everything that's been deleted will be overwritten. You can be sure of it. You won't have any proof or way to see that because of course they've already been deleted. So they're gone forever, but you rest assured that they're, that all of that information is gone. Now, I'm going to stop this here because I've got some other things that I want to show you real quick. Here's the thing. When you stop it too, all those, uh, all that information that's overwriting it, it's basically, it, it's, it's deleted. And so what it's doing is, uh, Windows Cipher fills up your hard drive with tons and tons of random data to overwrite everything. Like as I mentioned before, that's the only way to actually delete something. And then it just simply deletes all that random data. So it never takes up your hard drive space or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about you know, losing hard drive space or anything else. Let me see if I can zoom this in just a little bit. So one thing you can do just real quick, I recommend doing this. Cypher doesn't just overwrite stuff. So if you type in cypher.exe space and then slash question mark and then hit enter, it's going to give you all of the user information about what Cypher can do. And Cypher can do lots of really cool stuff. Like you can encrypt specific files and directories. You can encrypt specific folders. You can tell the uh, the W command, the one that we just ran that overwrote, you can have it just overwrite in a particular folder. You don't have to do the entire C drive. Like if you've got one particular place where you deleted some files and you know that those files only need to be overwritten, you can just run command or the W command with that folder instead. Uh, you do tons of other things as well. I'll let you read through this on your own. But again, that's cipher.exe and then slash question mark in order to, right here, in order to see all the things that it can do. All right, so in a future video, I'm going to show you how to automate this so that it does it on its own. Um, we're going to pair it up with our previous video where we made the batch file that kind of runs the disk uh, cleanup wizard all on its own. We're going to add this to it as well. So you're going to run a disk cleanup and empty your recycle bin and run this cipher command all in one go and all you have to do is click it once and then boom it's done so i will see you in that video